Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Home Budget Breakdown. Today, we're going to see Mr. in Rochester, New York. He sent me all his information, and we're going to see if he can actually afford a house or if we're going to be crushing his home buying dreams today. Hey, Javier, huge fan. My wife and I are trying to run some numbers to see if we can afford a house. Would love for you to humble us if that means a YouTube video, LOL. That's what they call me, the, the home humbler. Our current situation is as follows. Our take home pay is $8,468. We've saved up $20,000 for the house. We have no debt. Houses we're looking at are between $200,000 and $300,000, and we do have an emergency fund of $10,000 and separately a 401k. Well, first thing I'm gonna say is, holy crap, is there houses that cheap in New York? I thought that everything was just super expensive there. I'm, obviously, I don't know what I'm talking about. So first, let's get an idea of the neighborhood, the area, and see what the prices are looking like. First thing I like to check if we're considering buying is how much does it cost to rent a house there? And is it about the same as the mortgage would be if you're buying a house? And I know you say you're renting for a thousand, but let's just kind of see what the houses are renting for. Um, first and foremost, I mean, I'm seeing some beautiful houses. Holy crap, you guys have a lot of character in your houses. So anyways, I'm seeing between 2,300 all the way up to like 35, 3,600. So it's about, you know, that we'll say high 2000 range for like that average house i'm assuming once again wow like look at these houses does anyone else just love this like american like man this is just it makes me want to makes me want to cry brother now let's see what's for sale in this area and same keep up the three bedroom two bath for future sense or anyone sending me any videos you can send me your stuff here contact at please make sure to give me a better idea of what you're looking for in a house so i can really narrow it down but let's move on a lot of houses for sale but i think they said between two hundred thousand to three hundred thousand and we're definitely seeing some pop up here looks like rochester itself isn't that big um or at least here in the map it doesn't look too big but there's plenty of houses to pick from between 200 to 300 now most of them do look like they're in the upper 300 range but wow look at that you can buy that for 250 oh my gosh i'm about to pack pack up my hey pack up your bags let's go Pack up your back, Sadie. We're moving to Rochester, New York. Got it? Wow, beautiful houses. Anyways, let's just pick out something. I mean, hopefully you're not going all. Let's go, let's go worst case scenario. $299. If you were to spend the most, what would the monthly payment for this look like? Get an idea of this. We're gonna be using huh? Win the House You Love's calculator, because it's my favorite calculator to use. Three hundred thousand dollars, and we're gonna be using the estimates based off of New York. That is high. Woo. Pulling up two scenarios here, both FHA and conventional. I'm assuming with conventional, your credit's a lot better since you have no debt. Um, it's looking like it's only $2,400-ish. That insurance seems kind of low for New York. I'm gonna trust Kyle's calculator. Uh, no, I'll bump it up just to be sure. Um, so yeah, bumping up the insurance makes our payments about, you know, give or take 2,500-ish. And it looks like conventional might be the better option. It might save you a little bit more money if you're looking at the difference. Now, of course, you really want to check with an actual real estate agent that works the area to see if that's the idea of the monthly payment. But even Zillow is giving me that range. So it looks like we're going to be there. So it looks like, yes, um, the good news is it does make sense ish versus if you're comparing the rentals and the home ownership, like you're going to be paying two to three K anyways for a decent house. So, yeah, I can see why you would think, well, might as well just own a house here. Right. So. That makes sense. So the location makes sense perfectly fine. Now let's move on to the next category, which is, are you in an actual position to buy right now? Talking strictly qualifications, you're gonna, they're gonna be checking your income, they're gonna be checking your credit score, and they're gonna be checking your job history. So I'm not gonna do a whole pre-qualification here, but based off the fact that you have no debt, I'm assuming that you've had debt and you paid it off, which means your credit is probably spectacular. You're probably well over in the 700 range, which means you can qualify for conventional or FHA very easily. Your take home pay is 84.68, which means you're probably making more than $10,000 gross. And they, you know, calculate about 45% of your gross income. So, you know, $4,500 is probably what you'll qualify for because that's 45% of $10,000. So you will easily qualify for this house. So it looks, everything looks good. But now the important part is, can you actually afford one? And for this, we're gonna be using my handy dandy home buying resource uh, calculator Excel sheet that I have on my Patreon. So for your gross income, I'm guessing you're around 12,000. I know that, you know, New York has heavy high state taxes or, or national taxes or whatnot. So uh, it's probably closer to like 11,000 gross. So that looks like it's about the same range as your net income. So, 
And being no debt, we're going to leave all this in zero. We're going to leave all this alone because that's more for your personal budget reasons. So we're not going to really focus on that. But here, by plugging everything in, we can get an idea of what we are monthly payment wise. So using the gross number that I calculated, it looks like you're going to be able to qualify up to $5,500 a month, which doesn't mean we're going to go that high. But if you were to go that high, that's approximately 65% of your monthly take home income. So please don't do that. I'm just doing that. I put it nice and big to scare the, the bonkers out of you. I don't know if you have bonkers and I don't even know what bonkers are, but if you did, they would be scared out of you. So let me explain what these numbers are. Okay. This is like a scale, like the scale that you want to be in, at least the closer you are to the left, the better based off the laws of budgeting, the safer number is 25% of your net. And as we scale up, we go to less lenient uh, rules. Here we have our 30% of net income. Just right is 33% of your net income. Tight is the 28% of your gross income. And if you really want to be tight, 30% of your gross income is right here. I would do my best to avoid these numbers here and try to stay in these numbers. So it looks like the really safe number doesn't quite work. Like if you're really trying to live super conservatively, 2100 will be difficult to achieve unless you buy like in the low 200s or you get yourself a really amazing deal. You buy down your rate heavily or something along those lines. It looks like more you're in that just rights or safe category. So overall, it looks solid. It looks like it's obtainable. It looks like not only can you qualify for a house, but it looks like you might be able to safely afford one. But here's the thing that I want you to do some research on. Okay. Um, don't just take this video and be like, all right, let's go. Like I want you to go and chat with your real estate agent and get a good idea of what the historical trends of the average value are. Are they going up? Are they going down? Really go into the nitty gritty into the zip code that you're looking in and seeing where we are. Are active listings increasing? Are they staying about the same? Are they going down? Are the solds increasing, staying the same or going down? Just get a good idea of that specific market. If the market is trending upward still, because there are some markets still doing that, then great, you're in a good position to buy. If they're going downward or there's like, like haven't really increased in value over the last few months, then if you're going to do it, I need you to be very aggressive with your offers. I don't want you to settle for anything or go fall in love with the house and just overspend for a house. If you're in a market that's starting to kind of teeter and might start adjusting heavily, great. You're going to buy, like I said, if you rent or buy, it's the same monthly payment, but still put yourself in a good position and protect yourself by maybe not taking as much concessions as you want, but taking a heavy price reduction to really pad yourself. And last but not least, your savings situation looks okay. $20,000 for a house, but separately you have an emergency fund. You have a, your, your retirement funds getting going. Um, that emergency fund should be a little higher at $10,000. I really think my belief is your emergency fund should be three to six months of not just your survival number. Like you want to live in abundance here. So if your take home is $8,000, then I would try to multiply that by three for your, just your savings. So instead of having 10,000 have, I don't know, 24,000. I mean, that would be really a lot more safer and more comfortable for you guys to get yourself in this position. You can do it because you've saved for your house and you've saved for other things, but I would really try to hit for that at least before we go into getting a house. Um, but the good thing is as long as you buy realistically, like around that 25 to 30% net income, you'll still be able to work on increasing that survival number. But I'm just concerned if you go get yourself into a house, you're going to be using some of that money for repairs and for, you know, stuff like that. So either start really padding that saving the house savings to not just be for your down payment and closing costs, but for move in stuff as well, or buying yourself furniture and for repairs, or go pad that emergency funds to be a lot thicker and bigger. And if you have to take a little from that because you it's so generously large, huh? man, if my wife ever walks in on me in these videos, she's going to question our marriage. <laughs> Anyways, you get the point. So overall, um, my friend, cool. You wanted me to humble you. I think we all are humbled by you. You're in a great position. You're in a great city. Houses are, houses are still very affordable in your area. You're in a very blessed position. I think you should take the advice I gave and, you know, hey, maybe make some room for the rest of us because it looks like we're all going to be moving over there with you pretty soon. For everybody else, send your information, my email at contact Javier Vidania. And if you want any of the resources I use in today's video, you can go to my uh, Patreon, which you can find the link for below. All the other links and good stuff are in the description as well. So check it out. Thank you guys for watching. See ya. Sorry, I'm like slurring my words right now. I don't know what's wrong with me. YouTube thinks you should watch this video next. Go check it out. See you guys in the next one.